we've got to do another poolside perspectives vocabulary um, lesson. And I think the word's going to be hydraulics. Going to go with the flow. So that's, uh, that's a real important word that doesn't get brought up very much. What's important to you about hydraulics? Well, it's one of those words that gets thrown around a lot. And, you know, more often than not, I, I think that there's a lot of things that are taken for granted in our industry. And when professionals and people that have been trained and skilled and educated, when we think of hydraulics, we're thinking about the flow of water, as Mike said. And, you know, this water that flows through these pipes is part of the circulation system for your swimming pool. And it's like one of the most key, most important things of this pool. It's like an automobile in a car. You know, you can have a crappy engine in a car and you can have a really efficient engine in a car. And one's going to get really good gas mileage and the other one's going to get terrible gas mileage and give you problems. And so when we're talking about hydraulics as it pertains to a swimming pool, we're talking about the movement of the water through the systems. And these systems on pools that are built these days are very complex. And the complexity is actually a good thing because it's, it's a way that the pools can clean. It's a way that they can circulate. They keep the water healthy. You know, they distribute chemicals. You know, it does all kinds of things. And, you know, as I have said before, you know, I've done hundreds of renovation jobs over the years. And the way that they used to build pools. Oh, with the big pipe? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the big one-inch pipe. Um, <laughs> and, you know, the service guys or somebody would go out and install a bigger pump on a pool with really small piping. And the motor would keep burning out on it uh, and people would complain about it. I mean, it's just, it's crazy to me. And like what we're talking over the past, this past 30 years, just how much our industry has morphed into being this little small closet, little swimming pool industry to this industry that's now serving up to people, these incredible outdoor oases. And that hydraulics thing, again, has to do with the movement of water. So it's really important. So how would you explain what hydraulics are? Well, I think your definition works really well for me, but it's the lifeblood of the whole pool. It's like having, you know, your blood movement through your body. If it doesn't flow right, you know, you're not going to perform very well. I think it's a great question for a homeowner to ask a, a potential designer. You know, what type of hydraulic systems do you guys use? You know, and Part of, part of my goal, at least for poolside perspectives, is again that we provide our listeners with a set of tools so that they can hopefully find out if they're dealing with somebody that's really going to be the right person for their job. And it doesn't mean they're not the right person for a job. It just means are they the right person for your job? If you're just building a relatively small uh, swimming pool project, it's a basic pool, you know, maybe not water features at all on it. I mean, there's not a lot to do on it. But some of these pools become so complex. Some of the projects that you and I have done, I mean, there's just so much going on on them that that becomes super, super critical. And that movement of water is just important. I remember years ago doing training and, and I would be talking to builders and they would say something to me on the order of, well, what difference does it make? It's just a pipe and the water has to go through it, whether it's going slow or going fast. Ooh. And so. The way that I explain this to homeowners is I've always said to them, look, if you want to understand hydraulics, here's a really simple way to do it. And I don't do this anymore because I can't drink Coke, but go to McDonald's, get yourself a Coke or a Diet Coke and get two straws. Get the one straw, which is massive because they have the biggest straws that there is, and then get a coffee straw. And then start sucking that coffee, either with the big straw or the little straw and tell me there's not a difference. Very much and so. that would make it's perfect sense to people, you know, so in swimming pools, bigger pipe is, you know, properly designed is always better, but bigger engines and bigger motors aren't definitely, you know, the way to go. So these are matched, there's, there's systems that, that can be fine tuned. And if you do it right, if you properly size the piping, if you put the right pool equipment and match it with the right products, you can fine tune these pools to be super efficient to run on almost no energy and to keep that water moving 24 seven. It's really very different. Yeah, the variable speed aspect that is now mandatory to install all new pumps in the United States have to be variable speed pumps. And with that, it is 
basically you're trying to run it through at a slow rate and so hydraulics are becoming even more important because you just can't use overcome everything with a bigger pump which was very very inefficient and not safe for uh, many different reasons which we'll get into later but yeah hydraulics are the backbone of everything and so where does someone in a consumer know that someone has a knowledge base of that and is there training in the pool industry that somebody can go through that they should have certifications or something yeah so unlike when we first entered the industry there is a plethora of educational opportunities within the industry. There's groups of people and professionals that, that work together to help one another out. Um, certainly the Genesis uh, program is a great one. Uh, PHTA has, I think, does the Genesis stuff. Pool, I'm drawing a blank here, Mike here. Watershape University. Watershape University, which I should have remembered that. They've got a fantastic program. There's quite a bit of information out there, and there's tons of classes you can go to the uh, to the annual international show and, and, you know, you teach classes there. I mean, you, you, there's all kinds of places to go, um, for somebody in the industry. Now, consumer, you're probably, you know, there's probably no need for you to do that, but I think where the need is, the need is that you have a fundamental understanding of the types of questions you need to ask in order to find out who's going to be the best person to do your job. So you need to know a little bit about a hydraulics. And I think just asking somebody, you know, how long have you been in the industry? Have you done any specific training? Have you, do you guys do a hydraulic design for each pool? Where did you get your hydraulic certification from? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be a great question. I think so. So day one, when I was in the pool industry, they sat me down and said, okay, here's the pipes. This is what flows through them, gallons per minute. Here's the pumps. This is what the outputs are. This is what you can do in an efficient manner. So I didn't realize how blessed I was that I got like Mike Jeremy has sat me down and told me this is how you do it. And I was like, Oh, okay. And I thought everybody knew how to do that. And later on I found out that that was not the case. And you know, we, we as a company in the nineties were using two and a half and three inch and four inch plumbing, which is, was basically, I didn't realize unheard of, uh, at the time, but, uh, yeah, it's something that if you're a person that's coming out to help you create your environment has training in that area that is very critical, or they should have someone that does have the training that they work with that maybe is reviewing things and things like that. You know, I think this is a, a we could talk about that for an entire segment. And the intent was to talk about a word, and I probably picked the wrong word because that is an entire segment all of it of its own. 